Well, at, at that time, whenever there was an election, the campaigns were very much concentrated at John McIntyre Square, and attendance there was very, very high. And my uncle, also called Adolfo Canepa, had been a founder member of the AACR. He used to follow politics closely, and I was very attached to him, and he used to take me along um, to those meetings. That was when I was 10 or 11 years old only. And then in, in, during my teens, I got to know Aurelio Montegrifo, who was um, a neighbor of mine as well, and Maurice Featherstone we used to play cricket together and he also taught me chemistry and they were AACR so it was very natural that I should gravitate uh, towards the AACR and as soon as I was in a position to do so having completed my university studies I was invited to join the executive committee. You described your first years in politics as a baptism of fire in the early 1970s. We won the election on the 23rd of June and were sworn in immediately. And there was a very unfortunate meeting of the Joint Industrial Council where a ludicrous offer was made by the official employers. And that was a immediate cause uh, which justified the unions uh, going to town and holding a, a general strike. I think there was an element of political motivation because we had been warned as soon as we came into government, prominent members of the TGW were saying, we are going to go for you. You see, the union and the party had had broken apart uh, six months previously. We had disaffiliated the union and therefore we got into a, situa a confrontational situation. You spent a hundred days as chief minister, but you say that you're not bitter about the way that uh, that period in your life ended. I knew for one thing, having been given so little time and the way that the public opinion polls were going, I knew that we were going to be defeated in the 88 election. Uh, that was a foregone conclusion. What I did not expect was to leave politics four years later. You know, I did four years as leader of the opposition, and literally we broke apart. We, the, the public opinion polls uh, were going badly against us. There was the emergence of the GSD. We were getting tired, and that I didn't expect. But then I went into what I call the years in the wilderness, 20 years working for successive governments, and it's worked very well because at the end of it all I was invited for the, th for the third time to be speaker, which I was able on this occasion to take it on. I never expected to be speaker, to be um, mayor as well. So there's been something of a, of a comeback which has rounded my political career in, in, very well. It's very satisfying, it's very fulfilling to be involved, to be doing something useful after all these years. And as I say, if I look back on my life, I mean, why, I, why should I be bitter? I've been very, very lucky. And how would you describe your relationship with Sir Joshua Hassan from beginning to end? My, my relationship with Sir Joshua Hassan was always good. We, we, we saw things very much in the same way. We were similar uh, political animals, just left um, of centre. The only problem arose when, um, in 1984, uh, when we won that election, it was the last election that we won, and he promised me two years in office, and he didn't deliver. Uh, that was a problem. It put me on the back foot. I didn't know what to do after that. Should I make a challenge? Should I uh, leave, uh, make, make some sort of a stand? And in the event, one thing I didn't want to be accused of was of being the person who destroyed the ACR. So that was a bit difficult. We had a number of years when we went in touch with each other, and then both the death of my son Michael uh, brought us back. So Joshua expressed his condolences, and at the end of it all, when, when, when he departed, we, we, we were once again good friends. So it had its ups and downs, but mostly I think it was positive.